So these could be the two best phones in the world. I've got the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. Both are extremely capable. They have wonderful camera systems and a lot of great features. But if it came down to the entire experience of owning these phones, using them every day, and then you forced me to pick just one as the better phone, which one would I pick? Now, the unboxing experience for both phones is fairly uneventful. If you're a fan of product packaging, the iPhone box has a more premium feel to it. I like the embossed iPhone on the front, and both phones come with a charging cable, but neither one of them actually comes with a charger. Now, it's been a while since I've used a charger that comes with a mobile device because they're typically slow, so in that context, I sort of get it. And at the same time, when someone spends more than $1,000 on a phone, I don't think it's unreasonable for them to expect to get a charger with a high enough output to match the fastest charging the device allows for. Now, as far as design, if you're choosing between these phones and you've already decided that you want a big phone, but the dimensions are a little deceiving. You see, both have glass on the front and the back, and both are about the same width, but the S22 Ultra is taller and thicker but it doesn't feel like it. And to me, that comes down to design. Now, the iPhone has flat edges, so you have to get your fingers farther around them in order to get a secure grip. Now, the edges are also fairly sharp, and to me, they become uncomfortable rather quickly when I use the iPhone with one hand and without a case. Now, if I do add a case, then the edges are no longer an issue, but then the phone feels bigger. Now, the S22 Ultra borrows its design from the Note 20 Ultra. It has curved edges on their side that are much more comfortable to grip, and I was a little bit worried about them being slippery, but I haven't found that to be the case. On the other hand, the glass on the back of the iPhone is a little less slippery, and both phones are comfortable when you're using them with two hands, but ultimately the S22 Ultra is more comfortable to use and hold with one hand. Now some of this comes down to software, which I'll get to in a minute, but most of it has to do with the design, so I'm going to give the edge to the S22 Ultra. Moving on to aesthetics, I know it's only a personal preference, but I think that the S22 Ultra might be the nicest looking phone that I've ever used. And I know it's a small thing, but I really do appreciate that in a device that I use every day. I love the smaller bezels, and I also prefer the look of the pinhole camera on the S22 Ultra to the large notch on the iPhone. It's not that the notch is a huge deal for me, it's not, but given the choice, I would rather have a cleaner display with more room for system information. For biometric authentication, both phones offer facial recognition, but the iPhone's Face ID is more secure. Now, the S22 Ultra also offers an on-screen fingerprint sensor, so it really comes down to what you prefer. The iPhone is nice because it's essentially automatic when you hold up the phone, but some users prefer being able to securely authenticate using their finger when their phone is off to the side. Now, personally, on a phone, I prefer facial recognition, so I would choose the iPhone with the more secure option. When we look at the two displays, again, this is a close call. So both offer spectacular displays with HDR support, 120 hertz adaptive refresh rate, meaning that they can automatically adjust to give you faster refresh rate for smoother animation and scrolling. But at the same time, they can slow down the refresh rate and save on battery life when you're looking at static content. The S22 Ultra display is larger. It has a higher screen to body ratio, a higher resolution, and a higher pixel density. It also has a brighter display with 1750 nits peak brightness versus 1200 on the iPhone. Now, nits are not linear, so it's not 46% brighter, but it is brighter and it is noticeable in situations with bright sunlight or reflection. Now, the one ding that I have to give the S22 Ultra is that the curved edges create sort of like a small drop shadow on the top and the bottom when you're holding it in landscape mode. Now, this may bother some users, just like the notch could bother other users, but in both cases, I very rarely focus on the extreme edges of the display during day-to-day -day use. Now, choosing the better display in this case is sort of like shopping for TVs at a store. The iPhone display is beautiful, but looking at them side by side, the S22 Ultra is more crisp, it's brighter, and everything from gaming to watching videos just seem to pop a little more. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it the edge. Now, another important element when watching video is speakers. For phones, both devices are quite good and get plenty loud. So the S22 Ultra gets a little bit louder, but it's also a little more hollow or tinny. 
when you listen to both of them side by side, the iPhone has a more full and rich sound, so it definitely gets the win when it comes to speakers. When mobile phone companies market their camera systems, they put a lot of focus on the specs. You see what I did there? But nowadays, there is so much more that goes into creating the final image. So let's talk about the hardware and then look at some photo and video samples. The iPhone 13 Pro Max comes with three 12 megapixel cameras, wide, ultra wide, and telephoto. It also has a LiDAR scanner, which helps with night mode portraits and autofocus in low situations, and both of which are really important. On the front, the iPhone has a 12 megapixel true depth camera, which enables face ID. The S22 Ultra has the best camera system that Samsung offers with a 108 megapixel wide camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and then not one, but two 10 megapixel telephoto cameras. The first with a three time optical zoom and the second with a 10 time optical zoom. Finally, on the front, we have a 40 megapixel selfie camera. And let's see how these two phones do head to head. When we look at exposure and dynamic range, the S22 Ultra produces a brighter overall image, meaning that a lot of times it brings up shadows and reveals more details, but at the same time, it can wash out some areas and lose some contrast. Here's another example, and notice that the S22 Ultra is brighter overall. Look at how much brighter the blue flowers look, but also notice that we lose some details in the white jar. What's really interesting is how good the Samsung HDR processing is. And when you look at the window on the top right, you'll see that it's completely blown out on the iPhone, but still has a good amount of detail on the S22 Ultra. Another example of HDR processing is this photo. So the S22 Ultra photo is slightly brighter, but look at the top left corner. It's completely blown out on the iPhone, and there's so much more detail in the S22 Ultra photo. Portrait mode was another interesting area. The S22 Ultra has much harsher edge detection, so when you zoom in, you can see a pretty distinct edge. You'll also see that all of our hair is equally in focus, and while it was able to detect single strands of hair, which is super impressive, it completely missed the two vertical wooden parts of the window. Now, the iPhone has a much more natural depth of field, and you can see the hair begin to blur as we move farther back from the focal plane, which in this case is her eyes. There's also a much more natural fall off in the hair and better bokeh in the background. Now, the iPhone also has much more natural and warmer skin tones, whereas the S22 Ultra washes out her face and then some of the background. Here's another example. Now notice the warmer iPhone photo versus the cooler S22 Ultra. And again, look at the defined edge detection in the hair with the S22 Ultra versus the more natural fall off in the iPhone. The selfie camera on the S22 Ultra is much higher resolution and it does produce an image that's sharper and has more detail. When we look at night photos, both phones are very impressive. I took several handheld shots and it's pretty much a coin flip as to which one you like better. Now, the iPhone photos are a bit more contrasty and look a little more like actual night shots. The S22 Ultra photos are a bit brighter and sometimes look brighter than the actual scene. But as far as which one is better, I think it's close enough to where I can call it personal preference. For video, again, both do a fantastic job. The S22 footage was a bit more saturated and like the photos, it has more information in the shadows. The iPhone footage is a bit less saturated, but has more contrast. Both phones did a pretty good job at stabilization, and that part was close enough to where I couldn't pick a definitive winner. Now, overall for video, the S22 Ultra is more versatile. It has pro video mode, which gives you much more control, and it has director's view, which lets you preview what every camera sees at the same time, and then switch between them in real time. There are other features like 8K video on the S22 Ultra and ProRes on the iPhone, which sound great and are extremely powerful, but they're not things that the average user will find super practical to use because of various limitations. And I'll cover them in a dedicated camera comparison. Now, every year phones continue to get more and more powerful, but when it comes down to performance, there are two things to consider, the specs and the actual real life use. Not surprising, in the US, 
OS, Samsung used the newest Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip with either 8 or 12 gigabytes of RAM and then between 128 and 1 terabyte of internal storage. Unfortunately, it seems like Samsung is sticking by their decision regarding expandable storage. And just like last year, the S22 Ultra doesn't have a micro SD card slot. With the iPhone, we're getting the A15 Bionic chip, six gigabytes of RAM, and then again, 128 gigabytes to one terabyte of internal storage. Now, if we look at benchmark scores, the iPhone comes out ahead in both single core and multi-core performance. And that's not even taken into account the game optimizing service on the S22 Ultra, which was found to throttle the performance of many apps and games, but not benchmarking apps. Samsung did release an update, which now lets you turn off this optimization, but how does this difference actually play out in real life? Well, both phones have been extremely fast so far. So for anything from browsing the web, going on social media and watching video, there's been no lag and the phones feel very responsive. Now I'll get to gaming in just a moment, but overall I'm going to give the performance edge to the iPhone because it has a more powerful chip and the extra headroom in terms of performance can become meaningful in the future. When it comes to multitasking, the S22 Ultra crushes the iPhone. You could use two apps at the same time and you can even boot up in dex mode and then have the S22 Ultra drive a desktop or laptop like setup with a keyboard, a mouse and a monitor, then an operating system that's very similar to a desktop. Now, this level of versatility is going to matter to some people more than others, but it's a clear win for the S22 Ultra. And this sort of takes us to iOS versus Android slash One UI because there are such different approaches. So iOS is extremely well suited for someone who wants to get a phone and then for the most part, use it how it comes. Everything is tightly integrated. The OS is simple and easy to use. There's some overlap with iPad OS and the apps are super well optimized. You're also promised outstanding operating system support from Apple. And although Samsung has made some improvements in this area, the iPhone will still receive updates for longer. Now, updates are also released at the same time for all iPhone users, and they seem to come quicker than Samsung's. With the S22 Ultra, you get an operating system that's a lot more customizable. There's a really useful side menu, you can see more apps at once on your home screen, and you have much more granular control over different aspects of the user experience. So if you're a user that doesn't like to mess around with settings or options, both phones will work, but iOS will be a better option and your phone will be supported longer. If you like to tinker and get things exactly how you want them, or if you want the option of multitasking or a laptop or desktop like user experience, the S22 Ultra is definitely the way to go. Now, battery life has been a hot topic and I've had both of these phones for long enough to conclusively say that both the 4,352 milliamp hour battery on the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the 5,000 milliamp hour on the S22 Ultra both get me through a full day of typical use. And the S22 Ultra is essentially on par with the S21 Ultra, which is to say that I get about eight hours of screen on time. But the iPhone 13 Pro Max is the longest lasting phone that I've had to date. And with similar types of use, it lasted me for more than 10 hours. The thing is that I rarely go through eight or 10 hours of screen on time without the opportunity to charge. So it hasn't really made a significant difference in my case. But nevertheless, there's no question that this is a definitive win for the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And when it comes to charging, things shift in favor of the S22 Ultra with 45 watts of charging versus 27 watts on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. This equates to a little over an hour to get a full charge on the S22 Ultra versus about an hour and 45 minutes on the iPhone. We're also getting reverse charging on the S22 Ultra, which was a feature that I used to undervalue. It's true that I very rarely need it, but it's been extremely convenient those few times where my headphones run out of charge and I was able to just use my phone to get them running again. Now I'm going to call battery and charging a push because the iPhone has better battery life and the S22 Ultra has faster charging and reverse charging. The one area where battery life is super important is when it comes to gaming. Now I play the same games on both phones, including Genshin Impact, 
PUBG, Asphalt, and a few others. And with both phones, games ran smoothly, graphics looked great, and both devices got pretty hot during long gaming sessions. When I played PUBG, both phones could go up to HDR for graphics with extreme frame rate, or Ultra HD for graphics with Ultra for frame rate. Now the iPhone 13 Pro Max can actually go up to 90 frames per second if you wanna have graphics set to smooth. Now I usually play on balanced and extreme in order to get a good combination of gameplay experience and battery performance. You also have the option of connecting a controller to both phones and then streaming games with the Xbox Game Pass app. Now both phones of course can run any game, but I like the larger and brighter display on the S22 Ultra. And that brings me to the decision of which of these phones I would pick as the better phone. Now, the S22 Ultra has better ergonomics, a more updated and elegant design, a larger, brighter, and higher resolution display, a more feature-rich camera system, a more flexible and versatile operating system, superior multitasking capabilities, and faster and more versatile charging options. The iPhone 13 Pro Max has a more powerful processor, longer operating system support with an extremely well-optimized app ecosystem, better speakers, and a camera system that easily holds its own and is superior in some respects. To me, unless you've already decided that you're staying within the Apple ecosystem or if you prefer the simplicity of iOS, the S22 Ultra would be really hard to pass up on. Now you should watch how the S22 Ultra compares with the Z Fold 3. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.